practice that you're going to just do the slides for me. Um, so first of all, before I get started, I will tell you a little bit about my background. Uh, not much, because I've been in Queenie's Air for 25 years. Uh, and when I started with Queenie's Air, I was living in a one-bedroom flat. Uh, there it's there, Oswald Street in Falkirk. I had shared custody of my two children, Lee and Lindsay, and they were six and seven years old at the time. And basically, I ran out of money. Long story short. Next slide, please. <laughs> Brilliant, that worked. I wasn't sure what happened there. You Jeff and Fiona like to be in control. <laughs> I was driving a B registration, Sarah. Now, that isn't the car I was driving because uh, I, I mean, you don't take proud photographs of a B registration two tone rust uh, in Blue Sierra. <laughs> so I picked one that I found in a car park that looked a bit like mine. It was an absolute death trap. Um, I was looking for an opportunity. I had no money to invest, and I actually borrowed the money to get started. And this is what I earned in my first three weeks in the business, £564.56. Now, to me, that was a lifesaver. I had run out of money. I had been pawning my jewellery. I'd been selling the old wedding presents that were up the loft, and this was the first three weeks' income. And what I would say here is your first income check is probably the most important check that you'll ever get in Clean Easy because that story stays with you for the rest of your life. But our business went like a rocket. We had massive, massive success in the first year, qualified to go to Hong Kong, didn't know. How I got there, I had no idea, just went there. And as I say, the business just went like a rocket. In the first year, the business turned over a million pounds. And in year two, it turned over five million pounds. It was just going crazy. So, so did I. <laughs> New house. Massive big house, new car, holidays, investments. They say that money can't buy you happiness, but look at Lee's face there, big smile on his face there. Um, that was money that paid for that. His 21st birthday to go to LA. A little bit of publicity there. The press love a rags to riches story, but if you're new and watching this training for the first time, it just lets you see that it is actually real. <laughs> And Cleanies uh, take us on a lots of, lots of amazing trips. My favourites are here, or some of my favourites. We have Hong Kong here, the very first one there. There's Bob a little bit here. Um, we have Florida Keys. That was a view from your bedroom window. That's me with Rob Foster, a young-looking Rob Foster, a young-looking Lynn. And we, the boat took us all the way around the Keys, and that's in beautiful Marrakesh. And we're just back from India and Mexico. And I think I'm praying that this is the right slide because <laughs> I've changed slightly. So I'm not going to tell much more about my story. I'm going to talk to you about my experience over the last 25 years in the business. Uh, and the training is called Perseverance. Have I had ups and downs? Well, in case you're wondering, that's the Himalayas. And my mum used to say, and I bet your mum did as well, I've had more ups and downs than the Himalayas. So here's my first year. When we got started, we had to post our orders weekly. You posted it on a Tuesday to arrive before 1.15 on a Thursday. If it arrived five minutes late, it went into the next week. So therefore, most of the time, Customers waited two to three weeks for their products. The time you ordered it, picked it up, delivered it to them. But then again, we've got post strikes. They get lost in the post. Bank holidays. Now, we got a bit wise later on. We used to phone up and see if our order was there. But if they said, no, it's not there, <laughs> then we had to reorder it. And was it out of stocks? 
No, no, it stops. Well, actually, yeah, when we first started, the Audi stops were running at 40%. Now, the reason for that was the year before we joined, Cluny were turning over 5 million. That was a total turnover. And as I just said, our amazing team turned, and that slide was missing, our amazing team turned over a million pounds in the first year and had six gold distributors all built in the business. So um, could you go back? Because I wasn't finished that slide. I like to be in control, Jeff. They're doing this on purpose. <laughs> Gold distributors had to collect the money from their team. So if you had a £20,000 business, the gold distributor business, you would be collecting that money every week. So that was the first year. Thank you. <laughs> My clean easy journey has been like that. But I've made a fortune. It's changed my life completely. Clunies has been my full-time income from the day I started in August 1992. In 96, I had an acrimonious split from my partner. Clunies, in their infinite wisdom, decided to give everybody on at 6%, which is the 10% now, accounts. And their credit control was dreadful. <laughs> People left the business. September 1998, I lost my dad, and I was ill for a few years after that. 2006, Fairpark went bust. <laughs> that was a company who, who owned us at the time. And that was amid a massive scandal. We had out of stock problems again, and people left. 25th of December 2010, I lost my mum, and sadly, again, my little quote, roller coaster. <laughs> uh, again, and now you see 2017. One day, that will be part of your presentation. Now, I will say, I don't normally put this part in my training, but I think in light of the last few months, I think it'd be interesting just to let you know that in my 25-year journey, have we had ups and downs? Yes, we have. The sun has to go down every night in order to come up in the morning. So, life does throw curveballs. Next, sorry. <laughs> well, I'll just do that when it's the next slide because when we get to my, there's a part of my training where you have to be quick. <laughs> right. Keep going. Never give up. You will make mistakes. Quite easy might make mistakes. The difference between school and life is in school we get taught a lesson, don't we? And then given a test. In life, we're given a test and then that teaches you a lesson. Right, so now I'm on to my training for tonight. Is I'm going to be talking, as I said, about persistence and never giving up. First of all, I know I said I was going to talk about persistence, but the most key element of this business is you have to have a good reason why. I just explained to you. <laughs> if you don't go to success, uh, John Collins talks about the rocket going to the moon. The rocket doesn't go to the moon like that. <laughs> the rocket goes to the moon like this. 97% <laughs> of the time it's off track. And therefore, most of the time, it is actually adjusting and adjusting to get back on track. So your reason why is what's going to keep you focused when it goes like that. And this is my reason why. My beautiful babies, they're not all there. Lindsay's got little Greg in her tummy. And the next slide, you'll see... Uh, Lee and Nikki's Bambino, beautiful baby Bell. <laughs> and she is there, beautiful. And Gregor with bow tie. So, what is your reason? Because if you have a strong enough reason for doing it, large or small, it can have an incredible influence on the direction of your business and your life. Don't tell me this isn't the average cleaning the distributor. <laughs> A screen went dark there. So let me tell you a wee story. And Jeff, if you're on the slides here, you need to be quick. Because <laughs> otherwise we will go over time. I want to talk to you about the Chinese bamboo seeds. It all begins with a seed. And with the vision of someone willing to wait. A Chinese farmer 
Hughes was struggling to survive and provide for his family, plants the seed and sets his hope and vision on all it will provide when it towers 90 feet above his head. With a heart towards the future, he digs hole after hole and plants the seeds and then he begins their care. And because it's human nature to want to see the results, he carefully inspects the spots every day. Nothing. He continues to water them every day, feeding them carefully and watching. Knowing he has to feed his family, he plants other crops carefully sown around the spots. The spots that contain the real hope for his future. Nothing. The other crops sprout within weeks, providing nourishment for his family within months, but provide nothing for the future. The Chinese bamboo seeds contain all his hopes and dreams. A whole year goes by. Nothing. His hopes, his dreams, they seem so very far away. He stares endlessly at the spots, but he sees nothing but barren ground. Has it died before it ever had a chance to grow? There's no sign of life here. <laughs> There's no evidence of life. We've said that before, haven't we? Has the seed rotted? Another year goes by. Nothing. His neighbours, those who don't know and believe in the miracle of the Chinese bamboo, laugh at him. Jeff, this is where we change to the next presentation. Just to explain, we ran out of space and this bit's on the next one. We had to do it in two parts. So we'll just have a pause. Well, uh, hopefully Jeff will... No. Ah! <laughs> this one's repeated in the next presentation. I'll be repeating myself. Is he pouring water and his life's energy into something that will reap no rewards for him? Another year goes by. Nothing. Three years of pouring water, energy and hope into the Chinese bamboo. Nothing to show for it. Yeah, he's heard of the miracle with the Chinese bamboo. He's heard of the huge rewards that come to those who believe. He sighs and he holds yet more buckets of water. Another year goes by, nothing. <clears throat> we'll just take it to where I finished off. Is he pouring water and his life energy and is something that will reap no reward for him? Another year goes by, nothing. Four years, four years of hoping, wishing and diligently tending his dream. Surely the miracle's going to happen now. His neighbours have stopped laughing. They don't really care anymore, but they do quietly talk amongst themselves about the farmer who's not quite right. Yet he's fallen into the habit, so he continues to water the spots. He continues to feed them. Another year goes by. Nothing. Five years. Nothing. The farmer's tired. Tired of hauling buckets. Tired of growing and tending so many other crops to feed his struggling family. Tired of trying to keep his dream 
alive, trying to see no results day after day. He stares hopelessly at the spots. He must have ordered them wrong. Maybe, maybe he didn't feed them correctly. If only he'd done things differently, there would have been growth. Despair rocks his soul. Five years he's poured into this dream, and he has hope for a better future. The vision of a better life for his family melts away under the harsh reality. Tears fill his eyes as he grabs for the last hope residing in his soul, and he slowly lifts the bucket to pour water on his dream. After five years, he realizes it would be folly to give up. Then the morning comes when the whole village is jolted awake with cries of joy from the farmer. Oops. From the edge of the road, they can see green sprouts thrusting from the barren ground. They seem to be growing before their very eyes. The farmer's dancing, the miracles happened, the miracles happened. He can't believe that it's actually happened. The spots become the place for everybody in the village to come, watching in amazement as the bamboo grows and grows and grows. Five feet, ten feet, twenty feet, thirty feet, forty feet. 50 feet, 60 feet, 70 feet, 80 feet, 90 feet, 90 feet, and it took five years and just six weeks the bamboo has grown 90 feet tall. Five years and nothing, and now this 90 feet and six weeks. So, what did he learn? He learned to do the daily things that would make it a reality. He learned to ignore those who said it wouldn't happen. He learned to push past his own fear and doubt and keep taking the action. He learned to have faith when there was no reason to have faith. Now he smiles every time he walks through the village. Gazing over his towering 90 feet tall bamboo, they know what can happen. And all the villagers, everyone, is hauling their buckets of water to tend to their own spots. So what about you? How long are you willing to work? How long are you willing to push past your fear and doubt? How much faith and belief are you willing to have? How long are you willing to take the action? What are you willing to do to make your dreams come true and clean easy? And I hope your answer is one that will help you to achieve all that you dream of in your life. So that's the story of the Chinese bamboo. And I think when you see there what is persistence, I think we can both say that five years, it, both, <laughs> both, all of us can say that five years attending those spots, feeding water in them every single day with not a sign of growth, is persistence and persistence is not allowing anything to stop you from doing an activity once you start it unless it's something really severe if you only become persistent when you feel good about something oh that's great i've got other stops there you'll start to drop one or more of your activities every time you're down you don't have to be feeling good when you're doing a particular activity you just have to keep going. Persistence is going against obstacles 
your emotions and the accomplishing your tasks under any conditions. Now, want to be persistent while waiting on the mood to stabilise. Well, just wait until we didn't get any more credit advice. These aren't on stops there. Or waiting until the situation is stabilised. We'll be like waiting for the wind to calm so that you can set sail. Yep, the wind will calm, but it might be too late. Life is life. You're going to face times where you'll find yourself not in the mood. You're going to face challenges. There's going to be struggles. There's going to be ups and downs. How can you recognize an up if you've never had a down? And if you stop working whenever you felt bad, then you'll never ever reach your goals. It's persistent. And if you look at this, there's a magnifying glass. To get that paper to burn, do you get the magnifying glass and move it all about? Up here, down here, down here, down. Let's move that about to check. That isn't going to work. You have to keep that in the same place and you have to have a precision focus to get that alight. It's the same to get your business alight. You need that focus. And how often do we see these? I think this one might be from Napoleon Hill, thinking grow rich. People quite often give up when success is just round the corner. You have to literally keep going, keep persisting. As long as you're doing the right activities, your business will work. So how to be persistent? Holding on, even if you feel like quitting. In other words, move on with complete disregard to your emotions. Keep that goal in sight. Keep that goal in sight, my babas, <laughs> my babas. If you can't visualize your reward, then you won't be motivated to keep going. Think about it. If you don't see yourself achieving that, why bother? What, what, what's to motivate you to do the work? And don't ignore the small task. It's the small task that's going to lead to success. Be persistent when doing these small tasks. As Jim Rowan says, there it's there, my favorite saying, my favorite mentor, success, a few simple disciplines, practiced daily, accumulated over a period of time. Failure, a few simple Errors of judgment, practice daily, accumulated over a period of time. So plan, track, and review your activities. Be flexible. It's not always going to go your way. It's not always going to go your way. And I know, to be fair, everybody I'm speaking to tonight, we, we've proven that we can go through the ups and downs, and now the business is ready to soar. So I'm speaking to the converted tonight. But be confident. The main reason that persistent people keep trying is they are confident that they will reach that goal one day. And that reminds me of uh, Claire and Chris Kinsella in Mexico when they on video, and I'm sadly I lost these videos because of the iPhone storage, they said that their next goal was a £5,000 check. And you watch this space, they will get it because you know why? They already see that £5,000 checks. If you don't have confidence in your abilities, again, you won't be able to be persistent. And remember, hold on to that bone. Don't drop that bone. That reflection is a mirage. The bone is not bigger and the grass is not greener. But you know, before I finish, it's more than just money. There's Jeff with that infamous tie on. Michael had a tie like that on in Birmingham, and some crazy chef cut it. So I was threatening to cut Jeff's tie there. So I wouldn't, because it's a beautiful tie. Jim with the hat on, you know, the Christmas decorations. You know, that hat went all the way to Birmingham. Everybody was wearing it. You'll see it coming up. And we did they know it had Christmas lights on it. Mary wear Christmas baubles. The gang with the Christmas jumpers on. It's not just about the money. This is in Birmingham. The team didn't have an umbrella for me. So this is, look how well they look after me. Put this on my head to save me getting wet. It kind of slipped on purpose. It's fun though, isn't it? 
This business is more than money. It's fun, friendship. Fun and friendship. I've known some of the people in Clunese for 25 years. Some of the people I'm working with today in Scotland, I've known them for over 20 years. I don't want to name because there's too many names to mention. But here's the hat. Our team love the hats. I've got to move this control panel panel because I love that one where Ursula with my hat and my feather boa wasn't what it was intended for. Fun, happiness. Don't know what I'm laughing at there. Try to do a selfie. I was killing myself laughing. Talking about laughing, there's my wonderful Irish team. They always, always make me laugh. It's friendship. It's fun. The beautiful Nicole Craig White. There's my control panel. Tracy. Mike. Kate. Hey, man. I see this photograph here. And we're all hugging each other. To me, that is what Clean Easy is all about. That's what Clean Easy is all about. Yeah, we can make a lot of money. In fact, we can make a fortune. And I have. And many people have made a fortune from Clean Easy. It's a life changing business. But in more ways than once, that's my babas. They've been brought up with this business. There's Grace, she's 10 now. That's a clean easy catalogue. I remember the street I was in when Gracie was in her buggy in that catalogue. My children were six and seven year old. There's we Rosie wanting to go in my suitcase to Mexico. Michael with the letter. I've never forgiven him. And even Minnie the dog loves to join in. So remember folks, sometimes we just have to be a little bit patient. And just keep going, keep going, never give up, and the success will happen. I mean, look at that. Somebody's got to come and rub that wee belly. Hey, how could you resist it? And just you look a cat, just you wait till I grow up. <laughs> Good luck, everybody, with your business. And thank you so much for your time. I am now going to end my presentation and pass you back to Jeff and Fiona. Apologies, I didn't have control of the presentation at the beginning, but it's still